the October 3rd premiere of Left Behind features Nicolas Cage as the new Kirk Cameron. No, actually Cage plays a different character, but he does star in the movie. All kidding aside, I thought this would be a great time to introduce you to an alternate view of prophecy. It addresses inconsistencies with the rapture theory in a way that's true to the Bible. John Noe is joining us today from Indiana. He's the president of the Prophecy Reformation Institute and author of Unraveling the End and The Greater Jesus. John, thanks for talking with us. Hey, Steve. Uh, good to be with you today. It's good to be with you. Rapture teachers go through severe mental gymnastics as they deal with Jesus' promise that prophetic events of Matthew 24 would be fulfilled in the generation listening to him as he spoke. Some people don't buy the rationalizations and simply dismiss Jesus as mistaken. John, you come from what's called the Preterist School of Interpretation. How do you understand that promise of Jesus? Everywhere else in Scripture that that expression, this generation, is used 17 times outside of his uh, famous Olivet Discourse, it always means the uh, uh, contemporaries uh, of Jesus. And uh, what the Raptures are trying to tell us is that the three uses within the three different uh, versions uh, Olivet Discourse, of Jesus' Olivet Discourse, uh, that that is somehow an exception to how that phrase is used everywhere else. And what, what I say is uh, that is very risky. Uh, interpretation by accept, exception is how you get into real problems. Another problem that turns away serious unbelievers is that whole bit of separating the 69th and 70th weeks of Daniel's prophecy by something like 2,000 years, maybe more. So how about that? Well, in my two books, uh, The Perfect Ending for the World and Unraveling in the End, the latest one, we show how Daniel's 490 years of his uh, 70 weeks prophecy was exactly, literally, sequentially, chronologically fulfilled. No gaps, no gimmicks, no exegetic gymnastics whatsoever. And as uh, uh, one of my hermeneutical textbooks uh, proclaim, uh, by it's called Introduction to Biblical Interpretation by Drs. Klein, Bloomberg, and Hubbard, that the historically defendable ex, uh, explanation or interpretation is the most reliable. The rapture seems to be a well-established doctrine, but you say it hasn't been around all that long. In fact, it turns out Luther, Knox, and Wesley never heard of it. So what's the origin of the theory, anyway? Well, it was invented in the 1830s by a guy by the name of John Nelson Darby under rather uh, uh, strange circumstances. Uh, he actually uh, received this as a vision from a 16-year-old Scottish lass named uh, Margaret MacDonald. And, but prior to that, it was never heard of in the church and never was the church teachings. And then from then on, it just spread like wildfire. I know somebody's bursting to ask. Okay, well, what about the two famous rapture passages? 1 Thessalonians 4, 13 through 18, and 1 Corinthians 15, 50 through 58. John, how do you respond? That was never viewed in the, in the church again prior to the 1830s as being a removal from planet Earth of a group of alive believers. It was always viewed as being resurrection verses of dead believers. You point out in the books how the rapture theory tends to promote escapism, leading its less dedicated followers to think, there's no need to make our planet any better today. We won't be here much longer anyway. Any comments? Steve, it is interesting uh, from a statistical correlation standpoint that when this rapture view uh, became the dominant view in evangelical Christianity probably around uh, oh, the mid 20th century, 1900s, that their pessimistic future view uh, resulted in Christians withdrawing from the public square in masses. This is the third time I've read through your material. I recommend Unraveling the End and the Greater Jesus to everyone. Thanks for talking with us today, John. Well, it's been a pleasure, Steve. I tell you what, uh, this has been some of the most seductive and destructive teaching that has ever uh, come down the pike in Christian circles, and uh, we need to uh, address it uh, head on. Everybody, 
you can see John Noe on TBN's The Church Channel. He's a guest on nine editions of a program called That You Might Have Life, airing in October. This is Steve Eastman for Wait Till You Hear This. Discover more stories like this one on our website, waittillyouhearthis.com.